Welcome in to the Ravens Rundown, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Happy to have you with us on today's show. We have the updated Baltimore Ravens hot board, all based on the interest that they have in who their next offensive coordinator will be, according to reports of who they're interviewing or talk to. We will gather all of that information and put it in one place for you here on today's show. Let me know before we give you the list of candidates where they stand right now. Who should be the next Ravens OC in your opinion? Whether it's somebody the Ravens are currently talking to or somebody they're not talking to, let me know in the comments section below and we'll get started with today's show. So this is what we've done with this Ravens offensive coordinator hot board. I have scoured the internet and gathered all the information and details and basically we're going to run through everyone that the Ravens have apparently gauged interest in, according to sources. We'll get to that here in just one second. But let's show you first what the next Ravens offensive coordinator is walking into. Not only do we not know for certain that Lamar Jackson will be back next year or not, although the Ravens indicate they want him back, the statistics show that there is a lot of work to be done for the next offensive coordinator for the Ravens in 2023. Last year, the Ravens' offense was the 20th highest scoring offense in the league at 20.4 points per game. Uh, Total yardage per game, they were at 16th to 340 yards per game. The rush yards, that was pretty solid, but it's the passing game and the red zone touchdown percentage that will need a lot of help. So let's get to the list of candidates at this point in time. Let's start with Denver offensive coordinator Justin Otten from the Broncos, who, of course, they're making some wholesale changes with a new head coach coming in. Nathaniel Hackett's gone, and Otten took over the Broncos when Hackett was fired with two games remaining. Denver ran for 117 yards against the Chiefs and for 205 yards in Week 18 against the Chargers with Auten Lee leading the way. There was a significant improvement there to end the season. Zach Robinson, the quarterback coach for the L.A. Rams. He is also the passing game coordinator, according to NFL Network's Ian Rappaport. Robinson is one of the candidates that the Ravens are talking to. Has experience. Uh, They struggled to move the football this past year due to injuries. But I got to tell you, I really like Zach Robinson. Uh, I interviewed Zach, gosh, it was about four or five years ago when he was working for Pro Football Focus. And he is a brilliant football mind. Had a really good college career at Oklahoma State with the Cowboys. Went on to play in the NFL for a minute. And he has been a star on the Rams coaching staff. And we've seen what Sean McVay has done with some of these coaches under him where they've gone on to do some big things. I think Zach Robinson has a bright future in this league, and the Ravens would love to have him. Look what he did with Matt Stafford last year, Baker Mayfield this year. Zach Robinson deserves a lot of credit. We head to Cleveland. That is where we find Chad O'Shea, the Browns wide receiver coach, according to Cleveland.com's Mary Kay Cavett. O'Shea has uh, a solid track record for developing wideouts, including Jarvis Landry, OBJ, Amari Cooper, and Donovan Peoples-Jones. He's a candidate that's being talked about. Also on the list is Dave Canales, the quarterback's coach for the Seattle Seahawks. Canales has been in Seattle the entire time that Pete Carroll has been head coach of the Seahawks, but he has not gotten the chance to be a play caller at this point in time. And he gets a lot of credit for what he did with Geno Smith this year, for Geno to go from a backup to a Pro Bowl quarterback, over 30 touchdowns. A lot of credit is due to Dave Canales for what he did to work with Geno Smith and make that offense work. Got four more names that we'll get to of who the Ravens apparently have gauged interest in. We'll get to that here in just a second. But before we do, quick question for you. What should be the number one priority for the next offensive coordinator in Baltimore? What should it be? Is it the red zone? Is it the pass game? Is it feeling comfortable with Lamar Jackson? What is the number one priority? Let me know in the comments section what you think that is here on today's show. 
We are presented by BetUS, the exclusive sportsbook partner of Chat Sports. If you go to chatsports.com slash bet, enter the promo code chat125, you will get a 125% deposit bonus. Put $100 down, you get $125 to spend for free at chatsports.com slash bet. You can bet on the remaining NFL games, the NBA, college basketball, and more, including the Super Bowl odds, which are all pretty tight right now. The Eagles are a slight favorite to be hoisting the Lombardi Trophy at plus 260. Chiefs and Bengals both at plus 265. The Niners at plus 300. What are your bets going to be? Get your bets in now with the best in the game that is BetUS. Chatsports.com slash bet promo code chat125 for a 125% deposit bonus. Our next name is a little tricky. Producer Sam and I uh, did our research ahead of time and it is Brian Angelicchio. Say that five times fast. We'll just call him Brian or Coach Ange as he uh, refers to himself. Passing game coordinator in Minnesota. And according to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler, he is one that the Ravens are interested in. Was a tight ends coach for 11 seasons. Long time working with tight ends. We know that the Ravens have as good of a tight end room as anyone in the National Football League with Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Charlie Kolar and company. So that certainly makes you feel good. And we saw what the Vikings did this year. Kirk Cousins and company, they played the best football they've played ever with that offense. And Justin Jefferson and company, this could be a potentially sneaky good hire. Three more names to go. All of these are notable. We start with Frank Wright, the former Indianapolis Colts head coach. Now, Frank might end up getting another head coaching job, but if he doesn't, then Baltimore could be a very good fit for him as uh, he's being mentioned by Jeremy Fowler of ESPN as well. And if you go back, besides just him being a head coach, most recently with the Colts, and I thought things were good for the most part in Indianapolis, just did not end well uh, there with that team, but he does have OC experience previously with the Chargers and with the Eagles. And he won a Super Bowl with the Eagles, with Nick Foles at quarterback. Worth noting, though, he was not the play caller when they won the Super Bowl against Philadelphia. He was the play caller in Indianapolis most recently, but he was not the play caller with the Philadelphia Eagles when they won the Super Bowl. But Frank Wright, I think, would bring instant credibility to that offensive staff for the Ravens there. A couple more names to get to in just a second. What about Frank Wright? What do you think about the idea of bringing him to the Baltimore Ravens? If you think that's a good idea, type Y for yes. If you think that's a bad idea, type in for no. Let me know in the comment section, Y for yes, in for no. I want to make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you are not subscribed, you are missing out on daily Baltimore Ravens news and rumors. We're covering the offseason like no one else is each and every day on the channel as we catch it down to the draft covering trades, free agency, and more. It's all in one place. If you love the Baltimore Ravens, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to the channel. Make sure all your friends subscribe to the channel as well. Turn on notifications so you never miss a moment. YouTube.com slash Ravens TV. Two more names to get to. Eric Bieniemy, the offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs. And I know what you may be thinking. Well, why would he make a lateral move, go from Kansas City, who's in the AFC Championship game, to Baltimore. Well, there's been a point of contention of sorts over the last couple of seasons between the enemy and Patrick Mahomes. We've seen some things, uh, kind of some ruffle feathers of sorts between the two of them, their relationship. There's been question marks about as he spent the last five seasons there in Kansas City, but still has not gotten a head coaching job. He did win a Super Bowl uh, with Patrick Mahomes and, and company, and they had a very good run there. And They've been very successful, and his contract ends after this season. So that's where things could open up for a move to Baltimore, potentially for Biennemi. And something to keep in mind, too, another thing of why you may be saying to yourself, why, again, why go from Kansas City to Baltimore? Biennemi has not been getting these head coaching jobs that he's been interviewing for for the last several seasons. There is a belief of sorts that Biennemi – could move on and be OC at another place as a kind of prove himself situation. And maybe pairing him up with Lamar Jackson, a chance to prove himself 
that he's worthy of being an offensive coordinator. We know he can be successful. Questions about if he can be a people person of sorts, a player's coach, but the enemy's track record does speak for itself. One final name to get to on the list, that is Byron Lefwich, who most recently got fired as the offensive coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But Byron Lefwich, I mean, besides this year, the sky was going to be the limit for Byron Lefwich. He was on his way to being the Jacksonville Jags head coach last offseason, turned it down because he wasn't going to get to bring in his own GM. But he did win a Super Bowl with Tom Brady. A lot of people were actually blaming Brady for Lefwich losing his job. We know about what he did in the NFL. It's a 10-year NFL vet uh, can be a player's guy of some sorts, has that Super Bowl ring. Or My questions with Leftwich and why he's not my favorite on this is that he kind of reminds me of Greg Roman in an, off, in an opposite way. We always criticize Greg Roman for running the football too much and not opening up the passing game. Well, in Leftwich's case, where things went wrong in Tampa Bay this year, they passed the football way too much and didn't run the football enough. So do you want to bring in a guy that, did basically the same thing as Greg Roman, but the opposite of sorts. I don't know. That's why I'm kind of out on Byron Lefwich, although that he is a very good candidate. So with that said, as we've gone through this whole list, I have three names that I like of who Baltimore is apparently interested in. Zach Robinson, Frank Wright, Eric Bieniemy. Those are the three names in particular that I like. Now, who will they decide? That remains to be seen. But I want to know, based on the information we gave you today, What is your confidence level that John Harbaugh and the Ravens coaching staff are going to make the right decision? Management and company to hire the right OC. Scale it for me, 1 through 10. Let me know in the comments section. You also tell me on social media as well, Twitter and Instagram at Tyler Jones Live. And I'll see you next time right here on the Ravens Rundown. Have a great day.